you have your Bibles today, open again with me to Isaiah chapter 1. And we're going to read a little bit in the end, deeper into the chapter. I want you to start looking at me with me at verse 16. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 16. God says, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings. He says the same thing to you that he said thousands of years ago to the people of Israel through Isaiah. He's saying it to you today through me. From before mine eyes, cease to do evil and learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. This is divine social justice. And then he says in verse 18, I love this verse, he says, this is God pleading with you. See, most preachers plead and beg and cry for your money. But I don't do that. I plead and I beg and I cry for your soul. Because that's what God is doing. God is saying, come now. Let us reason together. This is your reasonable service. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Praise God. Though they be red like crimson, <laughs> they shall be as wool. God can separate you from your sin as far as the east is from the west. God can put your sin in the seas of his forgetfulness. God can look at you just as if you've never sinned. That's called justification. But you have to come his way. You have to come by the way of the cross. You have to come by the way of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I love verse 19. This is such a happy promise. He says, if you be willing and obedient, are you? Are you willing to do the will of God? Are you willing to obey God? Trust and obey, the old song says, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And then he gets very serious and very negative in verse 21. How has the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. The silver has become dross, the wine is mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. My, my. Everyone loveth gifts or bribes, and they follow after rewards, bribes, payoffs. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come before them. Verse 25, And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy dross, and take away thy tin. Verse 28, the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. Verse 31, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. And just one verse from chapter 2. Their land is full of idols. Same for you, America. United States of America. Land of the free and home of the brave. Your land is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands. You make your gods. You make your images. Your idol makers. Idol marketers. Idol manufacturers. Idol maintainers. Your works are your gods. That which their own fingers have made. And like I said the other day, we could read more scripture. And, you know, perhaps we should. I, I could stand here and maybe I shouldn't just read the whole Bible to you till Jesus comes. But let me give you the points of the message. I started the other day with... The commandments of God or the commandments of men. You could say the laws of God or the laws of men. Point number two is the purpose of God or the purposes of men. 
a, a best-selling book or two has been written by Rick Warren, The Purpose Driven Life, The Purpose Driven Church, but, but it's about our purposes and man's purposes and government's purposes and the purposes of humanism and the new age and self and the flesh and religion. It's the purpose. What is the purpose of God? The purpose of God must be greater than the purpose of men. And, and thirdly, the religion the old time, old school, pure, perfect religion of God that the Apostle James talks about or the evil, dank, dastardly, demonic religions of man. You have to reject your religion and accept the righteousness of God and find pure religion. James says that pure religion, undefiled before God, is this. You keep yourself unspotted from the world. You control your tongue. You visit the orphans and the widows in their affliction. That's pure Hey, hey, that's old school religion. Hallelujah. We need to put the fundamentals back in fundamentalism. We're about the fun. God says put the fundamentals back in fundamentalism. We, we evangelicals we're evangelically challenged today. Evangelicals need to get back to the basics and back to evangelizing and being evangelists instead of being entertainers. We need to forget about talent and come back to the truth of Almighty God. Next point. The truth of God or the traditions of men. And also, fifth point, the way of God or the ways of men. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to men, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no man comes to the Father except by him. Your ways, the way of money, the way of power, the way of self, the way of pride. These are the ways of sin, the way of idolatry. That's the way of sin. But we have to come God's way, and God's way is a narrow way, a way of faith, a way of the cross, and the way of repentance, the way of this word, the Bible. And the last point is the covenant and the contracts of God and the covenants and the contracts of men. The Bible is made up of two covenants, the old covenant and the new. The old covenant and the new. It doesn't matter what kind of contracts and cover and, 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 and covenants the world has. Do you know the new covenant? Do you know the New Testament? Do you know God Almighty and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the authors of the Bible, the author of the Word of God? So, in our text, we see some horrible, horrible things. I read to you about rebels. And this is how God sees you. Rebel without a cause. God sees you. You're running from God. You're a rebel. You, God sees you as a resistor. In Isaiah 1, verse 20 and 23. In Isaiah 1, 21, he sees you as a harlot. You're hooking up. That makes you a hooker. He sees you as a, you're on every dating site and you're on every hookup site. And you're not, you're not reading the Bible. You're not praying. You're not studying. You're not going to church. You're not living for God. You're, you're, living, you're living for your sex organs. You're, you're living for the next time you're going to get off. I mean, that's plain speaking. But I need to tell you the truth. You're not living for God. You're living for self. In Isaiah 1 and 21, he sees his own people. God sees his own people, his own Jewish people as murderers. In Isaiah 1, 21, he sees them as thieves. Religion, racism, and the spirit of murder. I should preach a whole sermon on it. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. The thief's not the devil. We, the devil gets blamed for being the thief of John 10.10. 10. The thief of John 10.10 10 is the thief of organized religion that comes to steal your money, that comes to kill you, and comes to destroy any chance you have to go to heaven. Poor devil. He gets blamed for so many things. Y'all remember Flip Wilson, 1970s TV? Flip Wilson, man. 
He had a he had a character, Geraldine. And Geraldine's famous line was, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. The devil made me. And so many of y'all, you blame it on the devil. The devil. that When Jimmy Swagger got caught with the whores and the porn years ago, he said he had a devil. He, 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 the devil made him do it. No, Jimmy Swagger. The devil didn't make you do it. Jimmy Swagger's flesh. Jimmy Swagger's self. Jimmy Swagger's sin. Same with Ted Haggard or every other preacher, Jim Baker, who's ever been touched with scandal. Carl Lentz, listen to me. Bill Hybels, it don't blame it on the devil. Don't blame it on the devil. Blame it on your own stinking, rotten, foolish sin. I'll never forget as a young preacher trying to start up as an, as an evangelist when Jimmy got caught with the hookers and the whores and the porn and they mocked him, Phil Hartman, with Dana Carvey on the church lady on Saturday Night Live. And church lady was sitting there and Jimmy... <laughs> I have sinned against you, my Lord. And church lady's mocking him, and, and, and church lady Danny Carvey says, Mmm, Jimmy. Well, isn't that special? Isn't that special, Jimmy? Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Swagger. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Who could make you do that? Who could make you do that with Deborah Murphy? Who could it be? Who could it be, Jim Baker, Jessica Hahn? Who could it be? Who could it be? Could it be Satan? Church lady was wrong. <laughs> it wasn't Satan. It wasn't Satan. It's our own flesh. It's our own sin nature. It's our own original sin. It's our choice to sin. We yield our bodies. And we're carnal. Paul says to the Corinthians. And our carnality is our problem. Amen. And don't shout me down out there because I'm preaching real good. I want to bring up something. You noticed in our text the beautiful repentance of verse 18. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow if you be willing. And you see, repentance has to come before remission of sin and before redemption. We, we get it wrong today. We think, oh, you can just walk an aisle and you can shake a preacher's hand. And you can join a church and you can pray a sinner's prayer and you can sing in the choir and you can do all these things and it'll be okay and God you will we'll, we'll catch the fish but God will clean the fish up tomorrow and you're redeemed and, 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 and your sins are no, 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 remitted. No, it, the repentance has to come come before the remission of sin and the redemption can happen. You still have to repent. You, instead of shaking a preacher's head, you should quake and tremble and shake before the fear and the terror of Almighty God before you fall into hell and burn forever. And no other preacher will tell you that. Those things won't save you. The sacrifice has to be right. The cross has to be right. The repentance has to precede the remission. These are, ladies and gentlemen, the first principles of the oracles of God. You say, well, Pastor Mike, Brother Mike, that's not my truth. I don't care about your truth. I only care about His truth. I only care what the Word of God says. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care what your church, your pastor, your denomination, your institution, your mama and daddy has to say, your boss has to say, your professor has to say. What does God have to say? What God has to say is the only thing that matters. Well, Brother Mike, what you're preaching is not American. 
you're preaching against greed and covetousness in the American way and building a business and getting rich and getting wealthy and capitalism and cutthroat competition and commercialism and materialism. You're condemning all that. That's not American. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, my loyalty and my allegiance and my devotion is not to the flag of the United States of America. It is to God the Father. It is to God the Father alone. All more Christian soldiers marching as to war. We need some warriors in the pulpit today. We need some warriors like mighty Caleb and like mighty Joshua. But instead of warriors, we have a bunch of wimps. We have a bunch of whiners. We have a bunch of worry warts. We have a bunch of wackos. We have a bunch of winos. And we have a bunch of womanizers in our pulpit. And God says we have to repent. And our repentance must begin in the pulpits. We need true repentance. We need godly sorrow that worketh repentance to begin, not only in the pulpits, but also in the pews. I got so much more to say. I'm done. I'm out of time. I got to pick it up tomorrow. Please stay tuned. Please join me tomorrow. This is Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike Dial saying, don't you dare touch that dial because there's nothing anywhere else. Love you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.